Dear Mom, It's been nearly two decades since I've written those words. And it's not only because you lost your three-year battle with breast cancer in 2003, or in the years prior to that, it wasn't common to text or email each other. It was mostly because I was the one always extending the olive branch. The years since your passing have given me time to understand you much more completely and finally forgive. One of the greatest lessons I've learned is that forgiveness is not for someone else. It's for the one who does the forgiving. Forgiving is meant letting go of hurt and anger. It's given me the opportunity to remember many good things about growing up as your daughter. Studying psychology in college enlightened me and paved the way for me to understand your anger and your need to push people away before they had an opportunity to hurt you. I also learned that mental illness affects the whole family. I've learned to admire your tenacity and your resilience. I've learned to appreciate how difficult your own childhood was as the daughter of an abusive and alcoholic father. They called you TNT when you were a youngster, a well-earned moniker, so I've been told. I often tell the story of when I was a newborn. It's shocking for me to know that the first roof over my head was a floating shack belonging to the logging company Dad worked for. You learned how to cook a meal and even a pineapple upside down cake using a wood burning stove, an empty canned ham can, and a pair of pliers. No wonder you insisted on moving to Nevada where jobs were plentiful and your two babies wouldn't be in jeopardy of falling into a cold Alaskan river. But soon after, when I was two, Cassandra was four and you were only 20, dad left. You took on three jobs to pay for rent and to put food on the table. You were a maid in a hotel, a cocktail waitress, and a telephone operator, and you still found time to collect discarded Coke bottles along the Las Vegas highway to redeem for gas money. I'm in awe of your work ethic. After Graham moved in to watch me and Cassandra, you moved our family to Southern California and jumped into a career of modeling and acting, which helped pay the bills. It wasn't until I was in high school that looking back, it occurred to me that all those times we moved in the middle of the night from one tiny apartment to another was because we'd been evicted again, but you kept trying. I'm grateful for your ingenuity and doing everything on your own and teaching us how to do it also. I know now there is no such thing as women's work or men's work. It's just work. You do what needs to be done and you move on. I'm glad I learned how to tear down walls, paint fences, sand and stain wooden floors, cut the grass, make minor plumbing repairs, all before I was a teenager. After you married Paul Heller, we were very lucky that our lives changed for the better. Even though he didn't live with us for more than three months, you remained married for 27 years. That baffles me to this day. You helped me understand how important an education is. You left school at 15 years old and struggled greatly. I was very fortunate to have a stepfather that paid for my college tuition, and that made me the first in a couple of generations to graduate college. You gave me blessings that I am only recently able to appreciate. I'm grateful for the life you tried to provide and for the lessons I learned. And I know that you're in a place now where there's no longer anger or hurt or disappointment. And I am so very grateful for that. So here's something I haven't written. Wait a minute. So here's something I haven't written or said in a very, very long time. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. <laughs>